supply won't. You don't know how glad I am to see you. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. Ah, all in a day. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But you and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we haven't... Earth has gone dark. <coughs> we haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. Hold on, Doc. Are you telling me the Earth went dark three years ago, and the board's just been covering this up? They've been incredibly effective at concealing the truth. Right now, the only people in the colony who know are standing in this room. Earth is only an idea to us, but that idea is the bedrock the colony is built upon. If people were to find out it's gone dark, the shock could be too much to bear. I don't want to imagine what'll happen once news gets out. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've su We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hope's brightest minds. And then, we're going to need a leader. And I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? I see. Well, uh, you've certainly earned a treat for yourself. I'll just, uh, get on with reviving the other colonists and saving Halcyon, then. Enjoy your, uh, creamed ice, or whatever you call it. OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists, engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. As the colony struggled to survive, the inspirational story of the iconoclast spread like wildfire, and Graham was able to bring many of the smaller Terra 2 townships into the fold. However, his zealous obsession with spreading the word blinded him to the needs of a growing organization and the movement was unsustainable at scale. The iconoclast way seemed to work best 
and ultimately petered out on Monarch. Sublight Salvage adapted to the changes in Halcyon, shifting their business model to suit the times. Their claims of legitimacy were scrutinized, but ultimately unquestioned. Lilia Hagen would continue to protect her family as ruthlessly as ever. The collapse of Edgewater left its workers bereft of any purpose in life. Most of them made their way to Adelaide McDevitt's camp, hoping to ingratiate themselves into her favor. Adelaide accepted only a few to her community. The rest were turned away and likely died of starvation. Nevertheless, Adelaide's camp grew into a well-established town. Adelaide McDevitt refused to cooperate with the ongoing effort to save Halcyon from collapse. A sympathetic deserter stole a copy of her research and delivered it to the Hope's scientists. It is unclear how useful Adelaide's research was. An optimistic estimate suggests her work may have bought Halcyon another few years of survival. Adelaide would never know. She died that winter. Under the leadership of Junlei Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave Junlei the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Ellie savored her adventures on the unreliable. Once they were done, she returned to life as usual, running missions of dubious legality, shunning respectable work, and living life to the fullest. She meant to reach out to her one-time captain, but she was always bad at keeping in touch. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Millstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. As much as he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar, known as Max, eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless, unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself. Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker, and Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, Tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and Jun Lei were never far apart. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Caron Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. 
Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the Ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. The revival project was hard and painful work, but in the end, despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Even after Wells passed away, the Hope's scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. Their efforts continue to this day, which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation, owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and left Dr. Wells to save Halcyon on his own. You had more pressing matters to attend to. As you tasted your first scoop of Rizzo's partially emulsified, semi-frozen milk-like dessert, you realized something. All your troubles, all your adventures, all your struggles and choices, they had all led to this single moment. And it was all worth it. No one knows what's happened to Earth. And no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. <laughs>